Okay, so for those who don't know me, I am Tara Littlefield. I'm the, the state botanist at, at the Office of Kentucky Nature Reserves. Um, I've been involved with Kentucky Native Plant Society for, for many years in, in various um, capacities. Um, and I um, also am the, the coordinator of the, the, the newly formed uh, Kentucky Plant uh, Conservation Alliance, uh, which I'll talk about. So I, I'm basically just going to give some highlights on some of our uh, plant conservation projects that we work on at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, and then some of our uh, partner projects that we're starting up um, through the Kentucky Plant uh, Conservation Alliance group. So for those of you who don't know, the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, we're a state um, organization in the Energy and Environment Cabinet. And we have a, a, a lot of various programs and all of our larger programs are, are tied uh, to um, laws. They're mandated by, by state law and, and statutes. So uh, the ones that I'm specifically gonna kind of talk about um, our, our um, rare plant projects, which are tied to our um, the Kentucky Rare Plant Act, uh, which is which is Kentucky state law, and then also um, our, can, our our Kentucky um, Natural Heritage Program, so our biodiversity um, and heritage uh, programs. So the Nature Preserves, um, the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, we are the Natural um, Areas Program. So we. Um, have various programs under, under our natural areas program. Uh, but basically um, we work a lot on land protection and acquisition through our Heritage Land Conservation Fund program. Uh, we create state nature preserves. Um, a lot of the state nature preserves are, are research only. They have a lot of rare species and communities. Uh, we also have um, uh, our, our natural areas. Um, uh, which um, are in, in a lot of uh, partner projects and conservation easements uh, with different state agencies and nonprofits uh, through our uh, acquisition programs. And we also manage the, the Wild Rivers program. And so I'll talk a little bit about how some of our rare plant projects overlap with the rare, with the, um, our Wild Rivers program. So we're also the uh, Natural Heritage Program. And uh, Noor uh, Salam is gonna talk a little bit later and she'll talk a lot more about um, our Natural Heritage Database. Uh, but basically every state has a heritage program where we um, have biologists and, and folks sending us, uh, uh, biologists collecting data and folks sending us data on rare species and natural communities. And we house this information in an online database. Um, and Noor will talk about this uh, in a later talk, uh, but we have an online um, uh, Kentucky biological assessment tool where you can go online and look at some of um, the information on these rare species. So I also, um, in 2016, um, uh, networking with the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves and Kentucky Native Plant Society, we formed um, the Kentucky Plant Conservation Alliance, which is a public-private partnership uh, of various organizations working together to save rare plants and natural communities. So a lot of the initiatives of that group right now are greater networking between all of the different conservation um, organizations and agencies um, and conservation horticulture. Um, and, and also serving as a link between all of these different organizations uh, uh, to, to work on different plant conservation initiatives and priorities. So you'll hear more about this group uh, coming up. We're, we're forming, um, uh, uh, we're uh, working on our steering committee meetings, uh, pulling in some new folks. Um, and so uh, if you have, if you wanna get more involved with this, please uh, reach out to me. And you can look on, um, we have a website that's a part of the Native Plant Society, and we have a lot of information on this group and a lot of the different projects that we work on. So plant conservation in Kentucky, um, we're a pretty biodiverse state. Uh, we're typically kind of um, you know, associated with the Southeast, but we have a lot of influence from the Northeast and the Midwestern prairies and the, um, and, and so multiple regions. Um, and this uh, map is a, is a map of where um, our rare plant uh, hotspots are across the state. And you know, a lot of our projects uh, that we work on focus around these hotspots and, and working on these individual species. 
So this past year, uh, every four years, um, as mandated by the uh, Kentucky Rare Plant Act, we update our rare plant list. And so in 2022, uh, we uh, worked on that. Um, um, and uh, there was a lot of work that went into that. So for, um, four years of, you know, it, the, the rare plant list is a, it's a work in progress. We're always working on it. We always gather new information. Um, we've got several botanists and ecologists now running around collecting information. Um, Devin Rogers, uh, who works at uh, uh, Kentucky Nature Preserves, um, was also instrumental uh, in helping pull all of this together. Uh, but we did a lot of work over the past four years to kind of beef up our, our rare plant database and um, rare plant assessments. Uh, so we, we updated a lot of the taxonomy. I like to joke that we weeklyized our flora and Alan's going to talk right after me. So you'll, you'll uh, get a little, a, a little feel for, um, for what I mean. And uh, uh, we, we've added a lot more information uh, into our rare plant database. We um, updated a lot of the conservation ranks, but the, but the general trend still held uh, where about 25% of our flora uh, is of conservation concern. So that's about one fourth. Um, so that's a lot. Um, you can find uh, the rare plant report um, and uh, the list of, of species uh, in our annual report. And um, the links are on here as well. You can also just um, Google the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves rare plant list and, and um, you can probably find it that way. Um, something else that we're working on a lot over the past year is um, we're partnering with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. Uh, to add plants and insects into this the state wildlife action plan and this is a huge project and it's really really important for plant conservation uh, because um, uh, it, it, it really um, uh, will will link plant conservation efforts um, with so many different organizations um, and uh, you know, integrating uh, plants and insects into into the the state wildlife action plan, and and you know, it, it essentially what we did was you know we have our rare plant list and this uh, what we've added into the state wildlife action plan is a subset of of priority rare plants uh, from our rare plant list that that we want to work on over the next decade. Uh, so. We're finalizing that over the next six months. There's going to be a lot of information and reports and some online databases that's, that results from that. Uh, so more on that soon. As a part of that as well, um, we are also uh, working on natural community profiles that will be linked to all of our uh, state wildlife action plan um, uh, plant species. And so um, this is also something that's in progress that's going to be released this year. Uh, so more on that soon. Um, so let's see. Our office, um, we are the recovery leads, the state uh, cooperators with US Fish and Wildlife Service for federally listed plants in Kentucky. So we work a lot with US Fish and various partners on the recovery um, of all of the federally listed and at-risk plants. In Kentucky, we have nine federally listed plants currently. Um, over, since I've worked at Nature Preserves um, over the past 15, 20 years, we have successfully delisted three plants. Um, and that comes with a lot of work and partnerships and, and um, uh, management plans and and so that that's a, that's a huge success but we still have a lot of work to do and there's a lot of plants that are globally rare that are not um, listed uh, and we also actively work on um, preventing the listing of those types of things uh, by proactively working on on conservation efforts of those so a lot of status surveys monitoring management um, uh, implementing conservation strategies uh, for all of these species. So I'm not going to go into um, all of them. That would be way too much. Essentially, every uh, uh, all of the, the federally listed plants, we have so much work going on with, with all of them. And, and almost annual, and annually, we do work on, on every, every single species under that program. Uh, but this is one, um, you know, it's just, it's spring is just, it doesn't look like it outside right now, but spring is just a few months away. This is one of our um, 
our spring flowering uh, federally endangered plants called bronze rock crust that occurs um, here in Frankfurt where um, our offices are at and where I'm at uh, this morning. Um, it's a, a, a cute kind of, you know, uh, appealing little mustard that maybe only a botanist can love. This is its glamour shot. It took me only 15 years to get this glamour shot of bronze rock crust. Uh, but, you know, th this, this plant occurs in limestone uh, mesophytic forests. Uh, we, we have a lot of state nature preserves with this plant. Uh, we do a lot of uh, private lands uh, monitoring and working um, to protect populations on private lands, uh, conservation easements, turning sites into state nature preserves. And then of course, with that comes a lot of monitoring and management on our own sites. So lots of good stuff um, happening. Uh, with bronze rock crust, globe bladder pod, similar habitat, uh, the Kentucky River Palisades. We do a lot of work with this. Um, I know um, Bridget Williams, Dr. Williams is gonna be talking later on about Kentucky glade crest, which is one of our federally listed species. Uh, Missouri Botanical Garden also is working on a genetic project on, 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 on globe bladder pod. There's just not, not enough time in the day to talk about all this stuff. Um, Kentucky clover, that's one we work on under this program. It's not officially federally listed, but it is um, the rarest plant that we have in Kentucky. Um, only um, two known populations. We work a lot with various partners on this. Missouri Botanical Garden is working on this one too for genetics. Um, we work with Cincinnati Zoo to propagate plants. Uh, so much stuff. White fringes orchid, this is a huge one. Um, we entered into um, a partnership last year where um, with the, uh, the uh, Daniel Boone National Forest where we are going to um, restore and um, recover uh, the remaining white fringes orchid populations in Kentucky. So this is a, a massive project, a five-year project that's involving a lot of our staff and a lot of partners. Um, and so more on that, I'm gonna be giving a seminar specifically on this project in March um, at the University of Kentucky if anyone is interested in that. So, so much stuff involved with, with this. Wild rivers, a lot of our rare plant work and, and natural community work overlaps with you know, our natural heritage or our natural areas program and our wild rivers program. And a lot of our federally listed plants occur on these prairies of the river. Um, and so we've done a lot of work um, in the Cumberland Plateau and the interior low plateau on, on several of these um, federally listed plants. Um, so I think that this is a video that may or may not work. I'm not sure, um, but this is, this is the Rock Castle River. It's a Cumberland River Scour, just amazing areas. Actually my screenshot or my background, this is Big South Fork right there, one of my favorite habitats. The Green River, this is a huge project that our office is working on. Um, not only uh, rare species monitoring, uh, but aquatic monitoring. Um, it's a large dam project where they're removing the dams on the Green River and in, and in some tributaries. And um, our aquatic biologist, Mike Compton, and several um, of our plant folks have worked on this and looking at the effects of um, the removal of dam on, on river scour uh, species on the riparian areas and also on all of the aquatic resources. This is gonna be a huge project where we're, we're gonna do some publications and, and some outreach for this um, this year. So uh, another video, this is me getting ferried on a boat down the Green River chasing an eagle. This place is amazing. Uh, there's some undescribed limestone river scour on this on this um, on this river um, that we're currently uh, um, describing as well. So really cool stuff. We do a lot of rare plant monitoring on our natural areas in partnership with our natural areas managers. Uh, so for the past five, six, 10 years, I'm not sure how long it's been. Uh, we've set up over 200 long-term monitoring plots on mostly our grassland sites, um, on our state nature preserves, uh, and um, in the Daniel Boone National Forest. So uh, we're really wanting to increase our, our monitoring and our um, kind of, you know, collaborations with natural areas managers, the science-based conservation of rare plants and natural communities. So, um, and 
this is just another example, you know, um, in, in addition to grasslands, we're doing bog monitoring work in the mountains. Um, we do a lot of seed collections uh, in, for our, our federally listed recovery program. We, um, of course, do a lot of ex situ conservation with partners. Um, and this is just one example of some Cumberland Plateau species that, that we've collected. Um, this is going to be on the stakeholder slide, so you can get uh, these um, links uh, during the break. Uh, but we've written up a lot of the projects uh, on the on the Lady Slipper in the in the Native Plant Society newsletter, so you can read about the projects and the different partners that were pulled into um, uh, uh, recovering a lot of and, and propagating a lot of these plants. We have an orchid restoration program that we work on with. Uh, Atlanta Botanical Garden and the North American Conservation Center. So lots of really great stuff going on there. Um, we do inventories on natural area, um, on the national forests. Um, I'm gonna slide through some of this stuff um, as I'm coming to the end of my talk. Some of you all may have heard Tony Romano, um, who is a botanist at Nature Preserves. Um, he manages our statewide roadside habitat survey project and this is year four so next year we will have completed an entire roadside survey of the entire state of Kentucky and that will be a huge feat so I know you guys have heard um, uh, probably several talks um, from our office on this program it's a huge undertaking Tony hasn't updated he's working on the reports right now um, but basically you know that far uh, uh, western part of the state was covered last year, and now we just have kind of the eastern part and the northeastern part of the state to wrap up. Lots of really great stuff coming from that. Kendall McDonald um, at our office uh, manages our biodiversity assessment program. Uh, we do the ginseng monitoring for the state in partnership with Kentucky Department of Agriculture, and that's also on a five-year cycle. And this is the last year of that five-year project. So you're gonna be hearing a lot more about that as well. Um, this is white-haired goldenrod. This was one of the delisted species um, from our federal program. And we're still trying to figure out how to continue to monitor this. Um, we started this Adopt a Rock House uh, program and um, we're working with partners right now to kind of revamp the program and, and see where we can take that. So more on that. Jeff talked about our Kentucky botanist big year. We do a lot of iNaturalist um, at Native Plant Society and at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. Shout out to Vanessa. Um, uh, we manage several different projects uh, and, and really as a tool for a natural heritage program, we get so many rare plant records, uh, updates, new records, just random stuff. There was a close call to some state records as well. So uh, using iNaturalist as a, as a tool to build our botanical community, as well as like find these really interesting records from folks that you would have never known about. Um, it's just an amazing resource that I've been really, really shocked about. Um, and we'll continue to increase um, our efforts uh, with, with iNaturalist. Um, and then I'll end with this. Uh, we're hiring. Um, our team of botanists and ecologists, there's seven of us now um, at Nature Preserves. We run around the state uh, looking for, for interesting plants and, and doing all of this great conservation work. We are gonna hire a, a botany technician this, this, uh, this year. So if you're interested in joining our team, um, reach out to me. I think this will also be in, in the, the stakeholder reel um, if you uh, um, are interested. Uh, but that is... Um, the end of my talk. If anyone has any questions, let me stop sharing.